welcome to Connected. Once again, I am here with a new guest and a new topic. Remind you that I am speaking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. You don't only see us through the Avi Ayala channel, but you can also can check us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. talk about beauty, detail and hard work in the fashion area. The clothing industry production is every time more and more global. We see thousands of pieces, all looking the same with different colors and also they're all made by machines. The good news here is that there are artists that are committed and devoted to make their creations in a really high level. What do I mean by this? There are artists that are still making creations, unique pieces, and not only unique, but also they make them by hand. This man doesn't only have a magnificent eye for fashion, but he is also incredibly skilled. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back to meet Enzo Barbato, who is talking to us all the way from Washington DC, USA. Stay connected, everyone. Welcome everyone, thank you for remaining connected. We are already with Enzo Barbato online, but before we are going to get to know a little bit about his background and about his lifestyle before he incursionated on this type of work, let's meet Enzo. Enzo Barbato grew up between La Paz, Bolivia and Washington DC having been able to also live in Italy and do advanced education in several places around the world. Always loved finding out about new cultures and different visions of what people think and see. After high school, he persuaded a bachelor in business administration and specialized in hotel and tourism. After that, he moved to Amsterdam, where he lived for a year, until he came back to USA and went back to the classroom for a big change in career. He decided that art was truly his passion, obtaining a bachelor degree in art history and a triple lane in fine arts. Later, he moved to Italy, where he took his first advanced courses in fashion design at the Marangoni School in Milan. Later, he decided to learn embroidery and took advanced courses at Lesage in Paris. While doing his Bachelor in Fine Arts, he opened his own company called Enzo Barbato Designs, and many years later, he changed the name to Casa Barbato in honor to his family's business that thrived in the 30s all the way to the 80s. It is my pleasure to introduce today Enzo Barbato, who is talking to us all the way from Washington, D.C. Enzo, welcome to Connected. To me, it's an honor to have you here today. Let's go ahead with the interview. So we've been talking about your skills uh, in this art. So please tell us, how did you get in touch with it? Did you have any influences? Um, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your program. And yes, uh, it is a pleasure to be here, uh, first of all. And I just wanted to uh, share a few things that uh, I have experienced going through this process uh, that it really was a change in life. It was a game-changing thing. Um, I didn't start uh, in the art field initially. I had a, a, a different career. I was very focused on uh, business and I actually do have a uh, BA uh, degree, uh, which I obtained right after I graduated from high school. Um, as things evolved, I did realize that uh, my passion was definitely um, uh, more towards everything that was artsy and crafty, and obviously uh, art history, which is uh, currently my new major. Um, Today I am focusing on fashion and fashion design uh, as well as embroidery 
and how did I get here? Uh, it's a good question. It is a process. Uh, it is something that started with uh, inspiration. Uh, I guess uh, my family had a lot of uh, um, influence on me in this aspect. Uh, my grandparents uh, worked in the textile industry. Uh, so did my great grandparents. Um, and um, my father was the only one who skipped this. But uh, nonetheless, he was very artistic. Uh, unfortunately, he just passed away. Uh, but uh, I'm so up until sorry last, to hear that. Uh, it's okay, you know, uh, things happen. He had a good life, and uh, really, the um, the legacy lives on, especially when uh, you talk about art, which is what I do today. Uh, you know, my family was very artistic always. I was, as I was mentioning before. Uh, and uh, I always had the influence of going uh, to the theater with my mother, uh, you know, um, talking and reading art books with my father, uh, going to the theater to, you know, to see an opera or, or a ballet. Um, my mother was a ballerina for many, many years. Um, and this really impacted the way I, I grew up and, and I observed, uh, you know, uh, physical expression and anything that has to do with creating with your hands. So after many years of, uh, you know, working in the business industry, I decided that um, I have had enough um, and that uh, definitely I wasn't doing anything that uh, was harvesting uh, that part of me that uh, was pretty much the, the biggest ballpark of who I am. So uh, I decided to go back to school um, and uh, I study uh, art history and that is my major. And uh, after uh, a few years, I um, focused on um, uh, fashion design, which I study in Milan at the Marangoni School. Um, it is a phenomenal school. I focus my, my, um, my skills on um, fashion design, uh, fine textiles and embroidery. Right. So as you're telling us, this you had like you grew up with art uh, surrounding you, coming from your parents, and then you went to business, and then you decided to finally go for it. So tell us, how was your personal experience when you decided to improve your skills and to learn more about embroidery? Well, um, improving my skills is it's a long shot. Uh, I would say um, starting to understand, starting or beginning the skills, the set of skills that are required for this uh, um, type of craft, uh, uh, there's plenty of it. Um, it's, it's a vast industry. The fashion industry is not only an industry, but uh, it encapsulates um, various different types of arts. Uh, some people can say that a fashion designer is not necessarily an artist and I partially agree with that because a lot of people work along your side and uh, you not necessarily have to be an incredibly painter or an amazing, um, um, you know, whatever. Uh, you just have to be, you know, the head of a company pretty much and have great ideas, business ideas. Uh, but. Um, process is very tedious. Uh, you have to start by understanding whether you have the, the skills required for the, for the industry. Um, if this is really what you want to do, because you need to keep in mind that artists in general don't usually make enough money to live. You have to start from the beginning. There's no bypassing uh, from level zero to level 20. You will have to start from the beginning and that is listening to your instructors, understanding what uh, they're telling you, uh, and practicing a lot. You have to practice every day. You have to sit and really sacrifice um, other things that you want to do and really devote your time. Right. It is really a, a almost, you can say it's a new path. Once you decide, you start a journey and you start walking. and. Tell me, Enzo, how did Enzo Barbato fashion start? What happened there? What's the story? Well, uh, you know, uh, going back a little bit in time, as I was mentioning before, uh, the people who started the, the whole textile uh, passion in my family was not, uh, was not I. 
it was my great grandfather. And uh, my grandfather and my great grandfather owned a store called Casa Barbato, uh, which is mm. a textile store. Um, and uh, they did quite well with it. Uh, and they worked on that field until they both passed away. So uh, for many years, uh, as part of a business entrepreneur, you need to look for a name that identifies and, and includes a lot of your experiences. And it allows you to create an identity that's already there. I just decided to go with the same name. I went just from Casa Barbato to Enzo Barbato because now that uh, everyone else in my family has passed, uh, the ball has been passed on to me. And uh, I am very proud of it. And this is, this is exactly who I am. So I think that whether for the good or the bad, my name should be in front of the line. And if I will be successful, it'll be uh, myself. And if I fail to do so, it will be completely my fault. And it'll be my name that goes down with me. So, yeah. You're definitely that. on the path of success, and so definitely you are. I have seen your work, and it's very admirable because nowadays, and I was, I was saying before, you know, when you go to purchase stuff, it's not very often that you find such a careful work you know such beauty in like unique pieces and stuff like that so which actually takes me to the next question i've seen your work and of course we are showing your work as we go speaking which one would you consider your favorite piece and why and which one of all of the pieces you've done so much uh, so far you saw the most okay uh, that's a very good question, and uh, it's uh, also a tricky one because it really depends. Um, every project uh, was given my 100%, and while I was working on it, it was my priority, and that was all I had in my mind, and it still goes on in the same way. So whatever happens in the future will probably be my favorite piece at that particular given time. Um, okay. However, I do have a couple of pieces that I really love, and one of them is a um, it's a cushion. Um, some of the work I've done is uh, geared towards interior design and embroidery for the interior design industry, which is a lot more rare than fashion design and couture. But I have uh, this cushion, which I worked on uh, for almost uh, three months. And it's not right. bigger than probably 25 inches by 25 inches. But um, it is so intricate um, and every part of it um, was done very carefully and with many different um, techniques that I had to learn mm -hmm. one by one. Um, and then apply them in such a small space that uh, towards the end of the project, I could not believe that I had done that I had done. made that <laughs> myself um, right and, was, and so really fast tell me how long does it take you like an idea about how long does it take you since you start you know a project until you finish well um, again uh, anything done by hand takes a lot longer but the result right. will always be better than a machine um, the small imperfections in handwork make it perfect that is a statement uh, that is something that i truly believe uh there are not really imperfections in terms of oh you were you were skewed or, or you did something wrong it's just that your eye in in your in your your hand have to work with harmony they they have they analyze the the, the texture of, of a piece of fabric and they will go along like the water flows through a mountain, it won't go straight through cutting edges. A machine cannot right. understand that. So, uh, you know, handwork is always much more tedious. So how long does it take? A long time. Uh, and the more <laughs> detailed you are, uh, the longer it'll take. In China, there are people that have embroidered one piece, one single piece 
since they were in their, you know, early eight or nine year old, you know, boy or girl until they passed away. And all they did is embroider one piece. So when you talk about handmade and how long it takes, it really, it's up to you. Uh, exactly. How perfect you want it to be, how beautiful, how intricate, how, how much it, you want it to be integrated in your life and stick around with you, uh, that is completely up to you. But I would say, you know, in the, in the modern days, if I had a commission or, or something that uh, it was commissioned to me, I would say in between a month and a month and a half would be for a small piece. Just, just to give you an idea um, on timing, um, we use what's called a hook. I don't necessarily use a needle uh, such as this one. You know, this is what most people use when they embroider. They embroider with a needle. Uh I okay. use so I guess the magic wand of my career, and that is a hook. And if you look over here, you'll see it's oh, a I see very the difference. Viscous crochet tip, and this is what I use to embroider. So this basically wow. goes out, and you could call you could you could you could pretty much say that this is the first sewing machine in the world. So you were saying, you were telling us that the favorite one that you've done so far, it's the cushion that you were talking about. So how yes. about uh, when you started to sell your items, uh, tell us about the ones that you sold the most or the, mo the ones that got more popular. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Sure. Well, um, art and retail are two separate things. So things that I do uh, in uh, embroidery are usually uh, a one-time thing. If I embroider a piece, I will not do it again. Um, I may do something similar. Maybe I need to change colors and I can change a little bit of the, the, the elements in the, in the composition. But that is precisely the objective of a handmade bespoke product that I can mm -hmm. only create one at a time. Um, now, in my company, of course, um, I do uh, other designs uh, which allow me to, you know, uh, sell more items of the same uh, category, per se. Right. And uh, definitely uh, my shawls, my capes and my scarves are the biggest sellers. Uh, the shawls I make are 100% uh, made in um, baby alpaca. And when I say baby alpaca, uh, I don't want to scare anyone we don't kill any alpacas and uh in fact uh the industry needs healthy thriving um communities of of these animals uh in order to survive so what baby alpaca means is it's a it's an it's a denomination it means a certain thickness of wool uh it can come okay easily from an adult alpaca, but uh, there is a process of separating the thinnest and finest uh, wool versus the medium and then and then the thickest. Um, so the shawls are definitely one very, very successful product. I can tell you that in the 15 years I've been doing this, I probably sold over a thousand of them, probably oh, more wow. than a thousand. Um, and uh, they are pretty much in, in every continent. I've sold uh, to Australia, I've sold to Hawaii, Japan, uh, Argentina, Germany, Italy, France, uh, uh, all throughout the United States, of course. Uh, it's one of my biggest markets that I reside here. I am also an, uh, an American citizen, so so this is where I've, I've lived right. for the past uh, 25 years, and this is right. where I conduct business and uh, we have a lot of people here that appreciate that um, and also um, you know in terms of men I do um, scarves for example and uh, some of my scarves are called uh, the theater goer uh, and these are shorter scarves that men wear uh, with a suit uh, so they're not long you, you don't wrap them around your neck you basically hang them uh, side by side your jacket and uh, they're more more of an ornament uh, than you know um, protecting you from from cold weather they are all beautiful pieces and I am it's really beautiful to see such a great job seriously it has some it's really fine work 
Um, and so I want to see more and we're going to talk a little more. We're going to come back with the last question for you. We're going to go to a fast cut. We'll be right back. People at home, stay connected. We'll be right back with the last question for Enzo Barbato. Talking to us all the way from Washington, D.C. And today we are talking about the beautiful art of embroidery. Um, I have the last question for Enzo. And Enzo, you were telling us about um, that you kind of picked up this art uh, or just the art itself because you grew up surrounded by it. So I'm thinking for the for the people that didn't have or doesn't didn't have or don't have that type of connection with art, with this type of art, but it does appreciate it, but maybe somehow feel a little hesitant in order to embrace it. What would you say to them? How would you encourage, as you said before as well, that you know it's hard and difficult to make a, a living from, from, from just art, just for, from what you make. So what would you say to these young people that would like to kind of like enter on this path? Okay, <clears throat> well, that is a good question. Um, I don't think there's a definitive answer for this. Uh, what I can tell you is that um, um, you need to, again, going back to the beginning of our conversation, um, you need to resolve and understand and be sure that this is what you want to do. Um, art is free and we're surrounded by it. Appreciating art um, doesn't have to be a degree. It doesn't have to entitle you to go to museums. Uh, there's art everywhere. Uh, gardens have it, flowers are, are pure expressions of art. Fabrics, outfits of people walking down the street. The, even when you look at a cake, a, a wedding cake, uh, everything you look, everything that's around you has a artistic value. I don't know that I can call it art again, but it has an artistic value. And if you just open your eyes to see these things constantly in your life, then you are living surrounded by art. You don't need to pay expensive schools. You don't need to get a scholarship. You don't need any of these things if you want to live an artistic life. All you're required to do is to embrace it and see it from your eyes and take it within and understand that if you absorb beauty that's outside and you bring it within you, then you are experiencing art. Now, people that don't have the means to study and they do wish to do this, well, you can start learning a craft. You can start doing art, creating your own art, developing your own techniques at home. You don't necessarily need to spend a whole lot of money. If you love painting, it is easy for you to go and buy some paint and start practicing at home. And if you need lessons and techniques, uh, there are so many channels in the internet where you can just get free courses. And to be honest with you, um, you can become a master just by listening to these people for free. So um, right. I know this is redundant. We are in the, you know, in the net world, everything is out there in the internet, but a lot of people take it for granted. You know, a lot of people say, hey, I wish I would know how to cook. Well, guess what? You can go to the internet and if you just follow recipes, you're going to cook like a master chef. And the same that thing can happen. That is so right. So for people that um, feel that this is not a career, uh, I can tell you, yes, it is a career. Will you make money off of it? That is entirely up to you and how much effort you put into this. Uh, the time and the effort will really decide. And yes, there's a little bit of, you know, um, um, you know, celestial luck, You it, like in everything else, right? Uh, no one has a fortune telling ball and no, nobody knows if you're really truly going to be successful at something. But success is, is relative. Uh, it, it's not measured by money. You can be an amazing artist and just do it for your own harvest or just to share it with your family or just to create, right. you know, art pieces for people that you love 
well, there's there's been in history many artists that have never sold a piece and they were only discovered after they passed away and they are some of the greatest artists uh, in history um right so for people that don't dare to to step out of the box and and truly uh devote the time i would say don't waste a minute uh no one is old enough not to learn even if you're 60 70 80 or 90 and you have never done any kind of art in your life uh we live within um an environment that is completely based on uh artistic expression and it won't take long before you can create something for yourself so um that's true i know that there, there uh, you know i know that there are a lot of um uh, cultures in which perhaps men are not uh, uh, seen uh, doing a certain type of uh, art or craft and uh, you need to move that from your brain and you need to understand that stigmas don't take you anywhere but to failure uh, everything you you uh, pursue in life should be done with a um, with a blank uh, page and never go in thinking that what other people think or what other people have done in the past um, right. are rules to abide your future. So uh, anyone should be, and, 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 and in fact, uh, uh, Fabiana, um, I encourage everyone in, in this program and anyone that is listening to our conversation to keep something in mind. Um, you must have an artistic part in your life in order for you to thrive fully. Even if you're a, a completely non-artistical person, uh, there is something <laughs> that can be done. You can do. Uh -huh. Yes. So work the left and the right of your brain. Don't just focus on one. And uh, this will keep you uh, happier, healthier, and more connected to the world, to nature, and, and definitely to your surroundings. So just dare to do it and don't be afraid and ask questions, read. And like I said, there's free information in different, uh, you know, channels, the internet and something that a lot of people right. don't do today is called books. You can also go to a library. <laughs> you can also go and, and find you know, them. Yes, that is correct. That's correct. There are no more excuses. There are no more buts. Really, we have all of the tools that we probably or we can need. And so I agree with everything that you said and I am so thankful for, for being able to listen to this advice and for your words. And in, before we say goodbye, I would like to give you some space for you to greet the audience and share your contact or your website where you, they can probably access to see your your creations and also to purchase them go ahead please okay well uh first of all i want to thank the program it was my pleasure being here uh, as a guest and uh, uh i want to thank you fabiana for your uh kind uh, uh time devoted towards uh, this craft um and uh i just want to say that uh you know if if anyone has a question uh, please feel free to contact me. Um, I do have a shop on Etsy. Etsy.com is one of the best, uh, uh, you know, art uh, buy and sell websites in the world. It's quite known. It is, it is the equivalent to an Amazon, but for people that create art and sell art Hi. mostly. Uh, I have my shop there, and it's Enzo Barbato Designs, and uh, that is, uh, that is uh, you know, who I am. And the shop itself is called Casa Barbato, honoring my grandparents uh, one more time. It's easy to find. And I'm also in Instagram as Enzo Barbato Designs or Enzo Barbato Fashion, either or will take you there. And you can, you can look at some pictures, you can see some inspiration, and if you want to contact me and ask me anything about, you know, what I do or what type of, uh, you know, um, techniques I use, I'm more than happy to help you. And uh, good luck to everyone. And thanks for having me one more time. And good luck to everyone. And so thank you so much. I'm going to have all of your information displayed on the screen. And I want to send you a big hug 
Mwah, a big kiss. Always be well. And until next time with me, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Good luck to Mwah. everyone. After listening to Enzo, we can definitely say that his path is filled with dedication, hard work, and moreover, discipline. As he said, it's not only the wanting to have the earn or the wish to do something, but to actually make it happen. It takes time and for sure you have to make your life and make all of your habits around your wish. I definitely encourage everyone to always learn something new and doesn't matter how old or how young you are, as Enzo said, we have all the tools on the top of our tips, which is the internet. And as I always remind you, use it. Use it for your own good and use it for your health. I will see you again in seven days. If you know somebody that is doing a great work for themselves or for the world, please write me and let me know. I'll be glad to connect with them. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I will see you again in seven days. It's till next time with me. Goodbye.